Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the limitation on qualified business income deduction section 199. Now before we start I would like to do a quick review of what we learned so far because it's important that you know the prior knowledge. The first thing in the first session what we did is we learned generally speaking about what is the qualified business income deduction which is the lesser of qualified business income or modified taxable income assuming no limitation. That's the general rule. Then we stated that Congress is a generous to a point, and the point becomes we have limitation, just like everything in taxation. Well, we learned about one limitation in the prior session, which is that applies to high income taxpayer that have non SSB businesses, specified service business. And in the prior sessions, we make sure we understood what's taxable income, what's qualified business income, what's modified taxable income, what's a qualified trade or business. So if you are not familiar, with these terms, because we're going to be using some of the formulas that we learned in the prior session, for example, the limitation, how it applies to high income taxpayer, the same formula or slightly adjusted will apply to specified service business, which we'll, we'll be discussing in this session. We looked at the three limitation of the three limitation. We looked at the overall limitation that's done in the prior session. We covered the limitation that applies to high income taxpayers in this session. We're going to work the formula that applies to certain type of service businesses, specified service businesses. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. It's very important to go back and look at the threshold. And in the prior session, I had a slight, slight mistake here. The taxable income for single starts at 181,100, not 81,200. It's a slight mistake. So simply put, if you are a single taxpayer, your taxable income is below 181, 182,100. It doesn't matter. You're gonna get the you're gonna get the full 20% QBI deduction. If your income exceeds 181,100 up to 231,200, which is in a, a $50,000 range. Once you get to 232,100, here it depends whether you're an SSB business or a non-SSB business. If you're an SSB business, you are done. If you're a non-SSB business, see prior session how to do that. If you are within the range of an SSB business, then this is what we would learn in this session. Same thing applies to married filing jointly, except the threshold starts at a higher amount. We have a bigger range. And the upper limit is obviously bigger. You are dealing with a married filing jointly. So what is an SSB or specified specified uh, service business? We discussed this, but well, let's do we discussed this in the prior session, but let's do it again. Doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountant, consultant, investment advisor, entertainers, athletes, coaches, YouTubers, mentors, financial advisors. Any business where you the individual is the business itself. Your reputation, your expertise, your abilities, your initiative is the business itself is a is an SSB, an SSB business. Okay? So that's why it's important to differentiate whether it's an SSB or a non-SSB business. So if it's a non-SSB business, okay, if it's non-SSB business, what's going to happen? We're going to have a limitation based on wages other than yourself and capital investment. And the same, for, same formula that we use for the non-SSB business, we're going to be using this session with a slight adjustment, adding to it something called the applicable percentage. Don't worry, we'll look at it. Just also know that engineers and architects are not considered SSBs. Now for SSBs, the IRS, they're trying to be fair. There's something called the minimus rule states that a trade won't be categorized as a specified service or an SSB simply because it provides a limited amount of service in a specified activity. So simply put, you might have a business where some of your some of the work that you do is considered specified service. Well, if it's some of the work, you're fine. But what's some of the work? Well, if your business has a gross receipt of 25 million or less, you could have up to 10% of specified service and still be considered non-SSB business. 
if your business has more than 25 million in gross receipts, you could still have a little bit of specified service, but only 5%. Okay, simply put, less than 25 million, you could have up to 10% of your services, a specified service income. More than 25%, you have 5% allowed. Let's take a look at an example. Computer services generates 10 million in annual revenue. Great, they sell computers. 9.5 million of the 10 million is selling computers and peripheral equipment. And what about the remaining half a million? That revenue comes from consulting, installation, and training services, which is considered a specified service. Now, since the consulting service, the other service, accounts for less than 10%, half a million divided by 10 million is 5%. And this business is what? This is less than 25 million in sales. Therefore, the company overall still considered a non-specified business. So they're good to go. They don't fall under the specified service business. So simply put, how about if, let's assume you're less than 25% and less than 25 million and 12% of your business is specified service business. Are you tainted? Is the whole business tainted now? Well, the, the minimus rule provides some relief, okay? Because a lot of businesses, it's hybrid. But what happens if you exceed that amount? Does the entire business get affected? For example, if you have a hybrid business, total sales 10 million, of that 7.5 is product sale, 2.5 is specialized consulting and service business. Well, based on the current limitation, if those this is the same business, you are tainted. You are tainted as an SSB business because 25% of your income is from, from services. So what can be done from a tax planning perspective? Here, what, what can be done? You have to treat the other business separately, with separate employees, separate sets of books, separate banking account, separate billing. If you can do that, then you can separate, if you can separate those businesses in actuality, which is you might be able to, then you have two, two type of businesses, then this will be non-SSB and this will be treated as an SSB business. Now let's dive into how we compute the limitation for SSBs because this session is all about SSBs. Once again, if you are below the lower threshold, there's nothing to do, you get the 20% deduction. If you Once you reach the threshold, you are done. No deduction for you. So the only thing we have to focus on is the rate if when, when someone is an SSP business and fall within the range. The first thing we have to do is we have to compute something called the applicable percentage. How do we compute this? We're going to take 100% just given to us minus the taxable income minus the lower threshold. Divide this by the range. What's the range? Depending whether you are single, the range could be 50,000. Married filing jointly, the range is 100,000. Let's plug in some numbers. 2023, a single taxpayer has modified income of 217, of which 217 means in between, between 182 and 232. 150 attributable to sole proprietorship and accounting that pays wages of 100,000. That's fine. Let's compute the applicable range. We're going to take taxable income, 217, 100 minus 182. And let's see how much is that. 217 minus 182, 100. That's 35,000. You are 35,000 above the upper, above the lower limit, 35,000 divided by the range, that's 70%. 100% minus 70% equal to 30%. So the applicable percentage is 30%. It means you are only going to include, when you do the QBI deduction, 30% of that. And when you do the wages, you're going to only include 30%. And when you include the asset, the unadjusted asset, you're going to multiply by 30%. Percent. So let's kind of go back and remind ourselves how do we how do we limit the how do we do the limitation based on wages and capital investment? Well, we're gonna compute the greater of fifty percent of the W two wages, or twenty five percent of the W two wages plus two point five percent of the unadjusted basis of a qualified property. And remember, of these two, A and B, we choose the greater the greater of A and B. Then we compare the greater to the QBI. Don't worry, we're going to look at an example. Let's assume in 2023, Sarah and John have a combined taxable income of $400,200 prior to the QBI. Well, what's relevant about this number? Well, the range goes from 364,200 to 464,200. So they fall in this category. And we're going to assume this is an SSB uh, taxpayer. Remember, if the taxpayer falls below this amount, 
they're good they'll get the 20 percent qbi or modified taxable income the lower of these two if they fall above this amount of their spi the answer is zero they don't get anything but he, we are in between so what do we have to do if we are in between well sarah works part-time as a financial advisor which is characterized as a specified service business Sarah's QBI amount is 75,000 and she pays an employee 20,000 worth of wages. So she has wages in her business. Also, Sarah has a business property with an unadjusted basis of 90,000. So we have wages and we have property. Now we're going to compute how much can Sarah and John takes in qualified business income deduction. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an SSB business. So we have to compute first the applicable percentage, which is 100% minus the 400,200 taxable income minus the lower threshold. So they are how much? If we take 400 minus 364, they are 36,000 into the threshold divided by 100,000. It's 36%. 100% minus 36%. The applicable range is 64%. Now we are ready to compute few figures. We're going to take first QBI times 20%. This is what we always do. Remember, we do QBI times 20%. The only difference here is we have an SSP business and that SSP business fall within the range. So what we do is we'll take these figures and multiply it by this applicable percentage. So we'll get an answer of 9,600. Then this is the first number. The second number, it's not going to be the greater of. It's going to be the greater of, not. It's going to be the greater of 20,000 times 50%, which is W2 wages, 20,000 that she pays her employee, times 50% times 64%. Again, if this was not an SSP, if we are dealing with a high income taxpayer, not SSP, we don't have to prorate by the percentage. 6,400 A, B, the other computation is wages times 25% times 64%, not 60, 64% plus 2.5% times 90,000 times 64%. Let me fix this 64%. I know the computation is right. Let me fix this times 64%. And this is going to give us the second computation is $4,640. Well, between 6,400 and 4,664, we choose the greater of these two. Lower of 9,600 and the greater of these two A and B, 6,400, and the answer will be 6,400. But that's not what we are dealing with. We are dealing with an SSB that falls within the range. So we have to use the same formula that we used from the prior session. We have to find the difference between the general 20% QBI, which we just did. It's 9,600, 9,600, and W2 wages capital slash capital investment amount, which is 6,400. The difference between those two this is step one step two find the reduction percentage there's an applicable percentage and there's a reduction percentage the reduction per the reduction percentage is your taxable income before qbi minus the threshold divided by the range the range here happens to be a hundred thousand for this purpose for the purpose of this example step three find the the reduction in the wages which is by taking step one times step two then step three a uh, step four taking whatever we got in step three and deduct this from the 20% QBI deduction. Don't worry, I'm going to show you the numbers on the next slide. Starting with step one, find the difference. I just showed you the numbers, which is 9,600 minus 6,400. Step two, calculate the reduction ratio. Well, taxable income, $400,200 minus the threshold divided by 100,000. The reduction ratio is 36%. Now we're going to step three, step one times step two which is 3200 step one times step two 36 percent will give us the reduction amount of the wages 1152 step four take the 20 percent of qbi which is 9000 i'm sorry uh 3200 no i'm sorry 9600 minus 1152 which will give us 8440 Eight. So this will be the QBI. What should you do now if you have? What you do now is go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, examples. That's going to help you understand this topic better. Lectures, multiple choice, true, false, additional, maybe examples I'll be posting. And this will help you tremendously. QBI is important whether you are an enrolled agent, CPA exam candidate, 
or accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.